I got tile map editing into my Jam game editor and framework. Jam is an editor inspired by Pico 8 that's supposed to remove as much friction as possible towards starting a game while also still allowing you to scale up to a full featured game when you're ready for that. And the language I'm using is Golang. We'll discuss that more a little bit later today. Here's the game running. And we're gonna look at these particles and how fast they are to run on my CPU a little bit later. But just to prove this is live, let's throw a very poorly drawn bush on here and run the game and prove that it loads up as edited. I can erase that. I can even start my guy in a different place. And I have some code that scans the map data and extracts the character from it for placement on the screen. I can edit sprites live, which matters a lot here. So we can make this a brighter green, for example, and run the game. And we see that it takes effect immediately. Also over here in the maps tab. Let's put the guy back where he was. And note that for now, I do not have layers yet, but I intend to have that. So for example, right here, when I put a bush on here, it's not on a different layer with the ground behind it, which is unfortunate. But one thing to note here is that I'm live going back and forth between my sprite sheet and my map editing. And I don't have fixed dimensions on the width or height of the sprite sheet. I expect to have zooming in and out and scrolling around in the sprite sheet in the future. And that flexibility matters in the data format that I choose. Let's look at some alternative map editors. One popular map editor is Tiled, which does have layers, including offsets in the layers. And since Jam is inspired by Pico 8, maybe we take a quick look at the Pico 8 editor also. We can go back and forth between sprites and maps here also, except for Pico 8, the number of sprites is fixed. So this is sprite one, sprite two, sprite 15, sprite 16, and so on. Tiled also expects a fixed layout for the source tiles when drawing a map. And Picotron is like Pico 8, except it actually does have layers, which means I can have some poorly drawn boulder slash meatball separate from a background grass sprite and compose them together. I plan to have layers in Jam later also, but I don't have them yet. And when drawing maps for games, worth keeping in mind that sometimes the data and the presentation aren't the same. So I got this game off of the BBS where people share Pico 8 games. I did not make it myself. But if we run the game, it renders like this. Notice locations of the houses, the trees, and the rivers. Notice this river here versus the river as presented inside of the game, or other houses as well and even the trees themselves. This is clearly being used as data for the game with the actual presentation being a separate layer of logic. Anyway, let's go look at file formats. And for Jam, I really want the ability to share files easily among different people on a team or to keep things in source control. And I want to use standard file formats as much as possible. So I looked at the tiled format especially because it's well supported. Tiled has both XML and JSON versions and the JSON seems to be probably better supported, so I'm going to focus on this. It's also a bit easier to read. Here's a tile set definition, and it's worth noting this columns field here. There are 20 columns in the tile set, which affects how the numbering of the individual tiles is defined. Each tile has a single number, not a pair of coordinates. And here's the map data. One big long array, which we can again interpret as rows and columns based on the separate dimensions of the map. You can also do that offset of tiles like I was mentioning. And here are multiple layers. You can also store this data in base64 encoded format, even compressed, but I left it in a raw format here to make it easier to read. And here are the tile sheets being referenced and how the numbering relates to each tile in a particular tile set source. And we can compare that, as I mentioned, to say Picotron or Pico8 data, which typically goes into single cart files where everything's smashed together so like, here's some map data, for example, base64 encoded. And while there are ways to get things in and out to other files and other people, there's extra friction involved from doing so, which I don't want to have. So let's look at the file formats that I'm currently using in Jam. Sprite sheets are just image files. I'm currently using WebP, 
Although I might switch back to ping or PNG just to make things as simple for people as possible to think about. And we notice here actually my edit to the brighter green got saved automatically from the editor. Maybe if you're editing these sprite sheets in a yet external editor like a sprite, you might need to re-export back to WebP or ping. But there's no export step from Jam itself. It just automatically saves in this format. And I expect to have multiple sprite sheets in the future, where again, notice the size is automatically determined based on the content. If I delete columns or rows, then that changes the size of the image and the number of tiles or sprites in it. And I'm also auto-generating Go source code that makes it easy to automatically access the tile sheet in a straightforward fashion. Now here's the odd thing I'm doing. I decided after looking at the tiled data format and thinking about options that I would just store my maps as pings. Again, I chose ping this time. Notice here though that wherever it's blank, I have a transparent pixel in my ping. And if we compare this to the map in the editor here, we can see that the shapes here correspond to the shapes in this image. Specifically, my eight bytes for red, green, and blue give which sprite sheet it comes from and the X and Y coordinate in that sprite sheet instead of just a single integer that assumes a certain layout of the sprite sheet or a tile sheet. And for layers, I expect to actually have multiple ping files. We'll explore that in a future episode. And just like for the sprite sheet, the tile map also gets auto loaded up and available. Although here notice I did lazy loading. This is super hard coded right now, but I expect to have it be more generalized in the future. Such that, for example, you can choose your tile sizes and that metadata will automatically go into generating the source file. So for the three tabs that do anything over here, we have maps, sprites, and code. And code, as I showed last time, is actually a real code editor. And here I am accessing the tile map and the sprite sheet just directly through that generated code as before. That's my entire load code. I just change the file. Oh, look, there's some yellow here now. I run the game and the changes take effect immediately. And again, this is my entire loading code. Although I do have some logic again that goes through the map and pulls out the player position or also pulls out the star so we can move them. We'll see that in a second. So because I'm basing Jam on the Go programming language, and Golang has garbage collection, I was wondering how much would that affect game performance? So a very simple test here for the particles of the stars flying through the sky. I have two ways of doing arrays. One is just an array of flat particle struct values, and the other is an array of pointers to them where each of those particles or stars is gonna be allocated dynamically on the heap and managed by garbage collection. In this form here, I get about a thousand particles alive at a time. Let's go see the CPU load. Unfortunately, I just call it code here because you wrote the code in the code tab. I expect to have better control over the executable name in the future. We see here, we're taking up about 12% of one CPU, as opposed to Picotron in its idle state taking 25% of a CPU. And I think I'll pause here and leave out what I recorded on the particle and garbage collection benchmarking because I think it will be best as a separate topic in a future video. Anyway, so that's my progress on Jam so far. I need to zoom in and out, I need better editing, but probably the next thing I'm gonna do is come to this project tab and allow making multiple projects because as I just showed, I technically have the ability to make games already. So when I'm working on these things, I can think what's bothering me the most? And what I think what's bothering me the most right now is that I only have one project I can work on. But there's lots of other things too that I need to get to. What's my timeline for finishing up Jam to where people can use it? Not sure, but I plan to keep working on it for now. And meanwhile, I hope this discussion has been fun. If you like the video, be sure to subscribe. Bye y'all.